Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Purple Star Campus Designation Application Meeting. Uh, it's about 9.59, and so we'll begin in about one more minute. All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Jimmy Bowser. I want to say hello and thank you for being here with us this morning. Um, we'll get started while we let uh, while some others come in. Uh, looks like we got about half audience with us today, so we'll let the others come in as they come as they come in uh, as we get started here. Again, my name is Dr. Jimmy Bowser. I'm the highly mobile state coordinator, and I'm the program lead for our military connected work here at the TEA. And today we'll take a little bit of time to discuss our work at the agency to support our military connected students and their families. As I mentioned, uh, my name is Jimmy Bowser I'm the Holly, and I'm the Holly Mobile State Coordinator. Um, I want to share a little bit about myself uh, before we get started. This is my 25th year of experience in education. Uh, my background experience includes that of being a teacher uh, as an elementary and middle school teacher, uh, as an assistant principal and a principal, and also as a district level administrator um, overseeing secondary schools. Um, I also worked for the Department of uh, Education Activity, but my original love and interest in this area uh, comes from my time in the military in the United States Marine Corps Reserve and National Guard. Just a little bit about me. Today, let's go over our objectives for today and then our agenda. So our objective today is to introduce and explain the Purple Star Campus Designation Program uh, requirements and the application process for today for today's participants. Um, we'll have an introduction, which we just did, and then we will uh, we'll take a poll here in just a second to learn a little bit more about who we have in the audience today. Uh, then we'll get into the authority, um, the statutory authority that uh, set aside the program, the Purple Star program uh, and its purpose. And then we'll go, we'll jump, jump into the meat of today's webinar, which is going over the program requirements. Uh, the, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about texasschools.gov. Um, we'll get, we'll jump into some FAQs. Um, I have some uh, frequent, not just FAQs, but also have some frequent application errors. So we'll talk a little bit about the application error. I will bring that up on the screen. I'll bring the application preview up on the screen uh, and after we'll talk a little and I'll we'll wind everything out we're talking a little bit about resources for support but um, throughout today's webinar we'll do a little uh, check for understanding to make sure that that learning is occurring in, during today's uh, presentation and so we'll have a few polls and so I want to go ahead and start with launching the first poll uh, let's see uh, All right, so if you can see the first poll, go ahead and start answering those. How much do you know currently about the Purple Star Campus Designation Program? We'll give you about one minute. And we want to, we'd like to see 100% of our applicants answer these questions so that we really know what kind of, which way to go with the program, with today's programming and offering uh, advice for the applications and how to make sure that your application is the most sound. So please jump in there and answer that poll and we'll share that poll with you in about 30 seconds and then we'll move into our program. Oh, 
We still have a few people that haven't answered. If you haven't answered, please go ahead and answer. If you just joined us, we have a poll there. Please take our poll. So how much do you know about the Purple Star Campus designation? All right, let's go ahead and end the poll, and then I'll share with you the results. Okay, so as we can see here from our poll, looks like about a little bit over a third uh, says they don't, they don't know anything at all about the program and are looking forward to the program. So welcome to that particular segment. We'll be sure uh, that we make this as clear as possible for you today. Uh, we've got about a third that says they're familiar, but not entirely. Um, about a quarter of us said that uh, familiar with the program, but want more information. And oh, we got about four percent. We got two people on here. It says they know everything they need to know about the Purple Star program. But so we hope to hope you'll learn something new today as well. All right. So, and when we get ready to talk about our military connected students, uh, there's a couple things we want to talk about first. First, Texas is home to 15 active duty military installations and more than 199,000 military connected students, uh, ranking second most in the nation. Uh, that is a number that is active as of fall 22 snapshot. So uh, when you did the snapshot back in the, the end of October, these are the updated numbers. We went from 176,000, just over 176,000 to over 199,326. So it's up about 13% versus last year. Uh, while service members understand that sacrifice is a part of fulfilling the commitment to serve in the United States Armed Forces, the families of service members are often faced with tremendous challenges as well, including multiple transitions during school years. On average, military dependents move six to nine times during K-12 years or three times that of their non-military uh, peers. In particular, military dependents who move during um, including varying state or district graduation requirements, who during the high school years face increasingly unique challenges uh, for their uh, graduation requirements, credit transfers, delays in enrollment, and knowledge gaps due to frequent transitions when compared to their uh, civilian peers. So who are military connected students? To answer this question, we looked at the statute through the def though the definition has, gone, has undergone a few revisions, the most recent definition of a military connected student is found in Texas Education Code 25.006D, which states that a military connected student means a student enrolled in a school district or an open enrollment charter school who is a dependent of a current or former member of the United States military, the Texas National Guard, or a reserve force in the United States military, or was a member they're dependent, it was a member uh, of the military or reserve force described in subdivision one who was killed in the line of duty. Students who meet uh, the requirements of the definition and identified as military connected students in our PEMS data system. So let's discuss the PEMS data system in the next slide. Next, we're going to we're gonna look, we'll go next to kind of looking at how the students are distributed first. So this shows, uh, mentioned that we have 199,326 military connected students identified across our 20 ESCs. This uh, slide shows uh, the distribution of those students across the 20 ESCs. And so as you kind of take a look at that, one of the things you might imagine as you're looking at the slide is that you think about areas like where our military bases are, like San Antonio, uh, it has three bases there. There's El Paso, um, it has Fort Bliss out there. Um, you have Waco where Fort Hood, uh, which is, I think as of May 9th would be called Fort Cavazos uh, is there. Uh, that's in Waco, near Waco area in region 12. And so you'll see a high concentration of our military connected students in those areas that are near uh, military installations. However, uh, you do have some areas like um, the Houston area, region four, which don't necessarily have a large, a large military installation there, but they do have a lot of um, military connected students in the area. Um, for, from three years ago when the um, PEMS codes were, were changed to add veterans and those, uh, those who died in the line of duty, 
um, to make them eligible, that their dependents eligible as military connected students, those numbers have continued to rise. And so clearly we have a large uh, population in the Houston area uh, that fit into those categories. So authority for the Purple Star program, um, Initially, when uh, the Every Student Succeeds Act was packed in, uh, passed in 2015, it required the reporting of assessment data for military-connected students. Uh, 25.006 requires LEAs to collect data on military-connected students. This is known as the Military Student Identifier, or MSI. Uh, TC 33.909 is a statute that specifically created uh, the Purple Star Campus Award and it was effective as of the 2021 school year, and it's been awarded each year here in the state of Texas. There are currently 227 Purple Star schools in the state. So again, it was created by the 86th legislature, Senate Bill of 1577, and the Purple Star campus designation was created to recognize campuses for demonstrating support and commitment to meeting the unique needs of military connected students and their families. And that was effective as of 21 school year. And we usually make those announcements in August um, of every year. Last year, it was pushed out a little bit to September. But so if everyone who's applying this year, you will be notified in August of whether or not you have uh, earned the Purple Star Campus Designation Award. All right, so let's jump into the meat of our presentation today uh, for our 35% who said they know nothing about the program. Here, listen, we were going to go over the criteria for campus purple star campus based designation. Uh, the LEA has five main components designation of a campus based military liaison, creation and maintaining of a web page for military connected families, creation and maintaining of an active student led campus transition program, and participation in at least one of three initiatives supporting military connected students and their families. Uh, once earned, the designation lasts for two years. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate and thank any of those campuses that have applied and earned the prestigious designation that literally speaks volumes around the world. As parents who are uh, get their permanent change of station from overseas and they come into the United States, uh, one of the first things they do is they look for Purple Star schools because these, these schools are known by our military families who live inside and outside of the United States, or what we could call CONUS and OCONUS. So this, uh, let's jump into our, our, the requirements. We'll go through each of the requirements one by one, and we'll ask some, some dual do some polls uh, after a couple of them. So first, first and the most important uh, criterion is the designation of a military liaison. The campus must designate a campus-based liaison that is employed by the LEA to serve as a campus-based liaison. The campus-based liaison should be a highly trained staff member whose duty in, duties include identifying military-connected students enrolled and ensuring the PEAMS military student identifier is noted and correct in your student information system. They, uh, the campus-based liaison serves as the point of contact for military-connected students and their families. Uh, they determine the appropriate campus services available to military connected students and assist in coordinating pro campus programs relevant to military connected students. They also are primarily responsible for ensuring campus compliance with the statutory requirements of the Pepper Star, Pur Purple Star Campus uh, designation program. So this one is really important to make sure that as a campus based liaison is chosen, that is someone that you know is going to be dependable. They're going to uh, you know understand the details of the program, the requirements, and they can work with campus leadership and other staff to do professional development that is related to military connected students. That they can make sure everyone is on board and understands how the program works, um, and they know when the time comes to reapply for the campus designation, uh, and all those things. And so. And they're they're creating doc documents. They're um, capturing um, evidence of things that you're doing at the campus to uh, recognize and support military connected families. So again, this is probably the most important criterion: is the person who is de designated as the military liaison, because your program will will rise or fall based on that person and how dedicated they are to um, ensuring the program's success and compliance.
All right, our next requirement is um, maintain on the campus internet, web, web internet uh, an easily accessible web page that includes resources for families, military connected students and their families, including relocation uh, to enrollment at, registration at, and transferring records to the campus, academic planning, course sequences, and advanced classes available at the campus, counseling and other support services available for military connected students enrolled at the campus, the military liaison designated under, under subdivision one and the liaison's duties under that subdivision must also be listed on the campus page based website. And what and one important note, note, one note I want to mention here is to comply with the requirements of subsection C2, four or five um, of the of the Purple Star campus designation required statute. Um, a school district may partner with the school district to provide an internet website required under subsection C2 if the campus does not have an internet website. Um, they can partner with the district to conduct professional development that is required under subsection C4, or they can partner with the district to um, do an initiative required under subsection C5. And what we'll do now is we'll take a look at a couple of examples of great web pages uh, that meet the statutory requirements, and we'll point out some of those things, and then we'll point out kind of some of those areas where uh, some of our campuses um, fall short in that area. So the first one we'll talk about here um, is Northeast ISD. Um, as you can see from this screenshot, the Northeast ISD website under the community tab in the Northeast ISD is in the San Antonio area. Um, so many, so, and so many of their students are military connected students. They have a great page specifically dedicated to their military connected families. And this is, um, where's my little pointer? Laser pointer. Uh, this is right, uh, this is on their main web page. So when you go to uh, community, uh, first they have a web, web military families web page that gives you all lots of information about military families. And so they created, so they created a, a shell of sorts uh, that helps, it's like a template for the other campuses. And so I'll show you that as well. If when you click on schools up here on their tab, it brings you to uh, a page that lists all the all the schools in the in Northeast ISD, and the Purple Star schools uh, are indicated with the logo listed as a recognition for the campus. So as you're scrolling through the the page for Northeast ISD schools, you know who the Purple Star campuses are because I have the logo there under recognition showing that they are a Purple Star school. And um, if you want to kind of re reference this page or this uh, particular page, district page, I have left the link here in the um, presentation. You guys will receive a copy of this presentation, hopefully a little bit later today. I'll be able to get it uh, out to you. Uh, so you'll have this presentation um, that you can use to, to then go back to your campuses and talk with your staff and uh, your, your district leadership about it. All right, here's another one that is actually a really great example. Um, this is from Socorro ISD, it's down near the El Paso area. Uh, they have a great, I mean, a really, really fantastic uh, page that's built. Mm -hmm. It's one that I usually point people to when they call and ask, you know, some questions about the military webpage. I usually will point them to the Socorro ISD page because they do a really good job. This is their main page for military families. When you go there, you can see there's a video that they have that talks all about how they support military connected families and um, some of the programming that they do, things are available to the parents, resources, uh, they have all that information is there. So this is a great one. And again, you'll have this um, presentation hopefully today in your inbox. You can go back and kind of look over this, but this is a great one, I would say to that you can reference for what's it, what we uh, consider an exemplar of what the, what the internet webpage should look like. So when you click on their schools uh, tab, it will take you out to their campuses. And so I just selected one of their campuses that was a Purple Star School. And this one uh, does a really good job. So on this slide, we have a couple of screenshots from Sergeant Roberto Etuarte Elementary School. The district does a great job of working with the campuses to create templates that help the campus adhere to the webpage requirements of the Purple Star campus designation, including the most important requirement, the contact information for um, the campus space liaison, and that's what you see here on the um, the second uh, screenshot there. Sorry, losing my pointer there. 
here in the second one. So this is the main page. You come to their campus page as of the same video that's there on the main page. It's kind of ported over to this campus template page. And then over here, you click on um, military liaison, just right over here, and it brings you to this page. And this this is the requirement where I, where I see a lot of districts, a lot of campuses that apply that don't meet this requirement. And that's why their application is not selected for the award. They don't, this is really, really important that on your web, on your web page, you list your contact information for your campus-based liaison and all of their responsibilities that are listed there. That is a, that is a must-have because that is the most important part of uh, that particular part of the legislation. And again, you'll get this. The website here for this particular school is down here, and you'll be able to go to that and visit that. Uh, if you want to reach out to Socorro ISD and kind of talk to, and have your district people talk to their district people to talk about how they built out these templates that make it easy for the campuses to create their pages, uh, I, I'd highly suggest that. It'd be a great idea. All right, so we'll take a moment to, uh, to process kind of what we talked about. We talked about the first two criteria for the Purple Star campus designation. We talked about the military liaison and their responsibilities. And then we talked about um, the campus-based web page. So we'll do a couple of polls uh, to just capture your thoughts and, you, and your information on that. Uh, so let's see, let's launch our military liaison poll. All right, so which of the following is not a responsibility of the campus-based military liaison? Please go ahead and select your answers. We've got about 20 more seconds. We still have a few that haven't answered. If you haven't uh, chosen an answer, please go ahead and select an answer. About 10 seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and end the poll now and we'll share out the results. All right, so as you can see, you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, about 88% of our participants today selected the right answer. All of the above are the responsibility of the campus-based military liaison. And there's some more that I didn't list in here. Um, and so I would highly suggest that you go to TEC 33.909 because it does list out all of the responsibility responsibilities of the campus-based liaison. So if you think, go back to that screenshot we were showing a second ago from uh, Itwate Elementary, you saw there's a long, there was a long list there that captures the information verbatim out of TEC 33.909. And so it's important that as you're creating your campus-based page that you just really just copy and paste that language right out of statute to make sure that you have that correct and that your page is built out correctly. All right, so great job, everybody. Learning is occurring. All right, so now we'll jump into our next section, which is the campus-based transition program. The campus must maintain a transition program led by students when appropriate and where appropriate that assist with military connected students in transitioning into the campus. A staff member should be assigned as the sponsor of the student-led transition program. Campuses should train students on the expectations of the campus's transition program. As a campus, you can decide the parameters of your campus transition program, but some best practice ideas can help include activities like campus tours, walking the students' schedules to help them understand how to get to their classes, uh, locating, uh, and practice, locating and practicing opening their lockers, if you still have those, uh, assigning them lunch buddies, Next slide, we have a few more there. Uh, inviting students to campus events and activities, introducing new students to key members of the staff uh, or operational orientation, like how to add money to your lunch account, where to turn in absence notes, locations of the restrooms, how, to, how, you know, how the hall passes work your, on your campus, or showing them where to catch the bus or find their parents' car if they will be riding home before or after school.
Many of the installations will offer transition assistance programs through their children and youth programming. However, there are great program models like M6, um, that's the Military Child Education Coalition. Um, their website is militarychild.org, uh, but they have a great transition program called Student to Student um, or Anchored for Life is another uh, transition based program. They'll come out and they'll train your kids on the program. Uh, they'll walk you through some things that have proven to be successful um, with helping military kids um, transition into the school. So those are some great ones. Uh, so feel free to look, kind of look into those if you'd like. Uh, the key thing to remember here is that military families routinely state that transitioning schools is the single most difficult part of the relocation process. So your campus transition program is your opportunity to ease the most difficult part of the process for our military connected families. The next requirement is that uh, the campus must offer professional development for staff members on issues related to military connected students. This can be done by the campus based military liaison, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can also be done in conjunction with a guest speaker from the military installation. Uh, you can bring in what's called an MFLAC, a military family life counselor. They do come in and do from installations, they'll do presentations at your schools. Uh, they can do them virtually, they don't have to be in person. Um, the topics are virtually limitless, um, but should pertain to issues related to military connected students, like the ones listed here. Um, and on the next slide. So we have topics like um, helping students build um, resilience, uh, identifying and supporting students that struggle due to issues such as deployments and other areas that may cause uh, this presentation, becoming a Purple Star Campus will count as professional development for your staff. So if when you get this presentation, you turn this around to your staff um, and do a few um, and do this presentation with your staff, that counts as professional development. You just have to make sure that you, you know, upload a copy of this presentation in PDF form into your application and then um, upload a copy of your sign-in sheet showing that all the members of your staff signed in and were trained on this. So this, this is an easy one to turn around. Like I said, hopefully you have this this afternoon um, and you can uh, get with your campus leadership and schedule time maybe for you at your next staff meeting to go over this presentation that counts as your professional development for this year. But you can certainly do uh, many, many more. Uh, the, another one is the Interstate Compact on Educational Opportunities for Military Children. Uh, this one is found in uh, TEC, uh, Texas Education Code Chapter 162. Uh, we call it the, in there. It's just called the Interstate Compact. You may you may also hear people kind of use these interchangeably with the term MIC three, uh, which stands for the Military Interstate Children's Compact Coalition. Uh, oh, commission. Sorry, uh, but they are the organization that um, helps to um, make sure that the kids, because all uh, the, the compact is one where you have. All 50 states plus the District of Columbia have signed on for this compact. So it's an agreement that they have that where they work out the issues among the states. So as students are transitioning from one state to another, there are certain rules that are in statute that um, LEAs have to uh, abide by. And by becoming a member of the compact, um, the compact actually states, if you look in, in chapter 162, it states that the compact actually overrides state law when it comes to military connected students. And so it's important to really understand that. And um, there's opportunities to get training on that as well. As a matter of fact, the next one is coming up on April 27th. Uh, it's being done by the National MIG-3 office. I believe it's at 1 p.m. on April 27th. Uh, but I can give you that when I get sent out the email with this with the with the um, presentation, I'll be sure to include that information on the training on Compact 101. I would highly suggest that whoever's going to be the military liaison attend that training on April 27th uh, to learn about the Military Interstate Compact. Um, other topics can be uh, assisting military connected students with college applications, other post high school uh, choices. And so again, the, 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 they're li limitless, you know, military culture. It means just, there's a lot of them, you, there's a lot of things that you can do there, but they should be based on elements. Um, um, they should be relevant to military connected students. So let's go ahead and stop there to do a quick poll or two. 
and then we'll jump into our Q&A and answer any questions that are in there. So, all right, let's go into, let's see, let's launch one on the campus base web page. All right, so which items are required to be on the campus based website? So only one correct answer. So choose your answers. All right, you guys are knocking this one out of the park so far. Got about 30 seconds left. We have about 10 people who haven't answered yet. If you haven't answered, please go ahead and select your answer and we'll share the results with, with our audience. All right, we got six, we got about eight people who haven't answered yet. Now, come on, you gotta you never hit a shot you don't take. Go ahead and pick one. All right, fantastic. We have about 90% of that entered their answers. Let's go ahead and end the poll and we will share out the results. All right, so as you can see, uh, which items are required to be posted on the Campus Space website? The answer was all of the above. So about 90, almost 90% 90 of us got that answer correct. So again, you guys are knocking this out of the park with these questions. Learning is occurring. All right, let's do one on the... Um, uh, let's do the tra transition program. All right, so which of the following would not be an appropriate aspect of your student-led transition program. Remember, I talked about how it was you could decide what the parameters of your program would be. Which of these will be something that you would not want your campus, your student-led campus-based transition kids teaching your new students? <laughs> We've got solid agreement on this one. <laughs> We've got about 20 seconds. We have uh, 13 people who haven't chosen one yet. Go ahead and look at those answers and make your choice. What do you not want your kids telling your new kids? All right, let's go ahead and end the poll. And wow. 100% of you got this one right. You do not want your campus base, student base, uh, student led campus transition. You do not want them telling kids, hey, skipping school is cool. That's the one thing, that's one of the things you do not want them doing. But that's also why it's important that you provide training for them, much like you provide professional development training for your staff. For staff, uh, it's the same thing. Pull the kids, do professional development training with them. Kids, you know, do you can do, you can do applications. Uh, for your transition program, again, it's up to the L each L individual LEA or campus to decide the parameters of their campus-based transition program and how, what things you're going to train your kids to do as you, as you have new uh, military-connected families that come in. And this transition program doesn't have to be just for military-connected kids. I want to make sure I point that out. It doesn't have to be just for those kids. If you have a good um, campus-based transition program, you really can be, can use that program for all of your kids who are transitioning in. It's just it's just a good practice for any school to do that. All right, so we'll jump into our last criterion and then we'll start talking about the application. So the fifth and final program requirement for the Purple Star Campus designation is that the campus must offer at least one of the following initiatives, a resolution, showing support for military connected students and their families, recognition of the month of the military child, which is this month, April, April is month of the military child, um, or military family month, uh, per, or per, uh, do, do purple up activities. Um, that's TEA is actually celebrating that uh, purple up. We sent something out on our social media uh, earlier this week. Um, the commissioner is actually doing 
a, a speech right now with all staff here at TEA, uh, where he's talking about Month of the Military Child and Purple Star and uh, with the, how TEA will recognize, um, you know, our, our, mil month, our military connected students. Uh, and so you can choose a, a time that is good for you locally. I know um, STAR is coming up in a couple of weeks. And so some, some campuses chose to move their Purple Star um, or their Purple Star activities to last week. And some are choosing to move it to the very last week in this month. Um, so it's up to you to decide when you want to do your Purple Up activities, but that would be something the camp campus based liaison would work with the campus leadership to decide that. And you can have all kinds of things. And I have um, Houston ISD sent me theirs. They have, they're doing some great activities uh, with theirs. And so, uh, and the third one, is um, you can partner with a local military installation that provides opportunities for active duty military members to volunteer at the campus, speak at an assembly, or host a field trip. One of the most frequent questions we get is the one about partnering with the local military installation when there's not a local military installation nearby. Keep in mind that there are active duty personnel in many areas that can also help out here. Your local recruiters are uh, other examples of active duty military personnel that can come and help in with this requirement. Uh, bring in your veterans uh, to help come in and maybe do a speech, do some speaking at one of your events. Uh, you know, maybe if you're celebrating Month of the Military Child or uh, Military Families Month, which is in uh, November, you know, bring in some veterans to do a speak, to do a speak, some uh, speaking at a an assembly or something like that. That would certainly count towards this. You just take a few pictures of that happening, upload into your application. Uh, there's a part that comes after that that says, you know, give a description of what you just uploaded, and you would upload. You just up, right to, to type in that um, that description, telling us that that's what that is. This this picture is showing, you know, our, a few veterans from our community that came in to speak with our kids at an assembly. Um, it, was, you know, it was somehow related to military connected students. But another one is that many of our installation liaisons are also willing to perhaps make a virtual appearance. Uh, this is an area where you can get creative. The technology exists now to bring service members right into your local community via the internet. I wanna go back to um, the first one we talked about, a resolution, uh, and I wanna show you a sample of what that looks like. And I'll tell you where you can go and get one that basically all you do is just type in the information and print it out and you, got, and you have a resolution. All right, so in, uh, here we have a sample of a resolution for, of the, for the support of military children and families. This one is from Lake Dallas ISD. Uh, the picture in the lower right is a picture from a Purple Up Day celebration. You can see all the teachers there are wearing, teachers and the kids are all wearing you know, shirts, that's, you know, Purple Up Day shirts. There's a banner in the background. These are the kind of things that you would wanna capture um, and upload them into the application as proof or evidence of your support uh, for military families. And someone sent this one in to us and we actually use this one on our Yota Military Families page. This is a picture that's there. Um, and so the, to, if you wanna go to, uh, earlier I mentioned the Military Children's Education Coalition or M we call them MSEC. Um, their website is www.militaryfamilies.org. Um, Military, sorry, militarychild.org. Uh, they have a toolkit for supporting military families, and they have all these different um, uh, resolutions that look a lot like the one you see here in front of you on, on screen. That basically all you do is just go in there, you put, you you download it, you go in and type out, type in your information, your campus's information. Uh, they have one for superintendents, they have one for mayors, they have one for the governor, they have one for uh, you know your your local campus, but uh, you just download that that template, fill in the information, and, and you know get the signatures, get it dated, and this would this is something you take a PDF of this and you would upload that into your application uh, as evidence of one that you did one of the three uh, things to meet this criterion for this er for this area. So that's our fifth and final requirement. Uh, we won't do a poll on that one. but I will jump into the Q&A right now. All right, so we've got a few over here. All right, let's see. Will we get a copy of this slide deck? Yes, you will get a copy of this slide deck. I will try to get that to you today. Uh, if not today, I'll definitely have it to you by tomorrow, and I will email it to everyone who attended today's presentation. Uh, can, uh, can we have a district-based webpage 
that list out the campus based liaisons and information and then campuses linked to it? Sure, that certainly is a possibility as long as uh, there, you know, I, I have seen the district do that when I was doing applications last year. The district itself set up a campus, set up a web page, and it listed out all of the um, campus liaisons, but then that will allow them to link to one tab on the campus's website. And so again, it's when, folk, when, when parents are coming to your site, they're going to be looking for your campus-based liaison. Uh, and so you definitely want to make sure that off of your web page, you do have a tab uh, that has the military liaison information built out there. So answer that one live, done. Let's see, is it live, done. Um, can the district liaison liaison guest speak or work with the campus liaison and offering PD? Absolutely, absolutely, 100%. We, we would certainly hope you would do that. That's a great idea. All right, Alejandro says, if we share this presentation to our staff, that counts as professional development? Yes, that counts as your PD um, for meeting the criteria for doing professional development. And I would highly suggest that you do that because it's a great thing to go ahead and get the whole campus on board with what you're doing. So I'm gonna try to get this to you guys quickly so you can quickly turn this around to your staff. Uh, the application window opened this week on April 3rd and it doesn't close until June 2nd. And so you've got some time, you've got the time in the month of April here and time in the month of May. I know for high schools, May is like testing month because you've got not only STAR, you've got AP testing, you've got all sorts of stuff going on, but it's a good idea to try to get this out there and get this in front of your staff uh, as soon as you can. All right, uh, Griselda says, can it be a district web page or does it have to be a campus-based one? You really need a campus-based page, but you can work with your district on helping to build that out. Uh, when is the deadline for the application? Deadline for the application is June 2nd. Uh, it's open now, It's open right now, um, but it's, uh, well, it is uh, open until June 2nd. Uh, if we want to highlight events outside of Military Child and Military Family Month, where would we include that? Um, you would include that as just part of your support for military families. So or you, you said, for example, it's Veterans Day or Texas Military Hero Day or Reese Across America Day. Those will be all things that are in support of military connected families. And so you would upload that in the area of the application that talks about supporting military families. That's uh, be was criteria number five that we just went over. Uh, can Veteran Day activities count to other recognition activities? The answer is yes. You guys are answering, ask, asking great, great questions. Can we get a, a copy of the, a former application for our district? Um, I don't think so, because we usually don't maintain those, those past a year. Uh, but if you email me directly, Cindy, I can see if I can find your application for last year. Um, we'll talk about best practice here in just a second. But one of the things we talk about is keeping a, a, an electronic portfolio so that it can be uh, transferred from one military liaison to another as, those, as the person who's done that may change. And so we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about best practices and frequently asked questions. Uh, what if you don't have a military liaison, just a campus-based one? Uh, your campus-based liaison, whoever you select, whether it's a counselor, if it's a teacher, whoever's gonna be your, mil your campus-based military liaison, that is your campus-based liaison. It, it doesn't have to be a military liaison. They're just your campus-based liaison or your point of contact for military-connected families. All right, Rodolfo says, who in the campus can be the campus-based military liaison? Is Rodolfo, the answer to that is, is anyone who is employed by the by your local education agency, by your LEA. So um, one of the things we had last year that disqualified a lot of applications, uh, we had a record number of applications and a lot of them did not get approved because they, for the, their list, when they listed their campus-based liaison, that's like question number one, I think, um, or like four. Uh, when they list out their campus-based liaison, they listed the military liaison at the installation. Your The installation liaison is not your campus-based liaison. It has to be someone based at the campus or at the district level. If you have a small district, it can be someone based at the district level, but they have to be someone who is employed by the district. Are you recording this meeting? Can you provide a copy? Yes, we are recording it. And yes, we'll provide a copy. Um, it takes a couple of weeks to get that done because we have to take it through accessibility. Um, and we have to follow the law for making all everything we publish access, accessible. Um, and so we will get this up. It takes a few weeks, but you guys will get the presentation today, hopefully. 
All right. Can campus liaisons be non-district supportive staff, such as communities and schools coordinator? Uh, if your communities and school coordinator is employed by your LEA, like a lot of a lot of LEAs, a lot of districts, they pay they pay the this the CIS people, um, representatives. Then yes, uh, but again, they it's just, it just has to be someone who is employed by the LEA. No volunteers. I understood that we were only servicing active military connected students. Uh, can we service students of veterans? Yes. Uh, military connected, when I went over the, mil the definition of military connected students, that's, so that does count, uh, or dependents of veterans are actually our highest number of military connected students. About 100 of the 199,000, about 105,000 of those are dependents of veterans. If we are purpose to our school and are applying for a recertification, the process will the process be the same? Yes, the process is exactly the same. It's the same application. Everything says the same. Um, but uh, Nora, what I would also ask you to do is, if you already have a Purple Star Campus designation and you're applying for your recertification to keep your Purple Star Campus uh, cert designation, go to our page, um, our Purple Star page. On that page is a self-assessment rubric. Uh, what you want to do is take that rubric, and that's not the rubric that your application will be scored by. That rubric is a rubric we created for you to self-assess your own program so that you can see from TA's perspective what's considered, a, you know, how, and be honest with yourself on where your program is and look to see how you can grow your program to reach those, um, those areas that would qualify your program as a very high uh, functioning program. And again, it's called a self-assessment rubric. It's on the Purple Star page. Can a district apply for this designation if the website meets all the criteria or the campuses are only ones to apply? Uh, the campuses are the ones that have to apply. But if you have a district person, like say if you're a small district, you only got like three or four schools and they're gonna submit applications for all four schools, then someone at the district level can certainly do that. And they can also be the campus based liaison if that's if you're such if you're a real small schools district like that. Will our application be disqualified if the campus liaison is not employed by the district? Yes. That is usually the, the number one disqualifier. That and they don't list their, their campus based web page on their application because that is one of the questions. Where's the rubric again? It's on our Purple Star Campus web page. It's again it's called a self-assessment rubric. And that's for those campuses, actually new or whether you're recertifying or if you're new, if you just kind of want to get an idea, self-assess your own program, just take a look at that self-assessment rubric. In regards to every question, if the district is small, they still need an application for each campus, even if a district person is lays on. Yes, the can't. It's called a Purple Star Campus designation, so each campus earns um, earns their own uh, designation. But it can be again, the application can be done by someone at the district. But each campus has to earn. They have to submit a, a campus an application for each campus that seeks to uh, to earn the campus designation. Uh, can we get a, a question? Um, Jeannie, I, I, may t I may be able to access these afterwards and just do an FAQ and post that as well. So um, I, will, I will look into doing that and creating that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, in regards to previous question of District Small, yes, we answered that one already. Uh, see, I work at HSC El Paso. Charter schools are able to apply, correct? Yes. Um, we have uh, several charter schools that uh, apply. We encourage, we encourage all schools to do this, uh, but um, it's, it's definitely open to all of our public schools and all of our open enrollment charter schools. So we include, we, have, we, we really want them all to apply. All right, so that's all the questions in our FAQ for now. Uh, so we will see we've got about, we're good. We're doing good on time because I do want to go over the application with you. Uh, so that you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So you do all these things, you earn the campus designation. What do I get, Dr. Bowser? What happens? Well, in August, we will send an email uh, to your district. Usually we send it to the district superintendent. We send all of the, we send the letters to the district superintendent the day before um, the press releases go out. And we ask, we put out an embargo on it and say, hey, here's all your, your campus that have earned the Purple Star Award. Here's all their customized letters that they can, for each campus gets a customized letter. Um, you get a letter from the commissioner 
of TEA recognizing your campus as a Purple Star campus. Uh, you get a virtual logo, a high resolution virtual logo that you can use on your school's campus and web page. If you can remember when we went back to the Northeast ISD web uh, page, for every one of their schools that are in the Purple Star campus, <clears throat> they indicated that by listing the Purple Star logo right next to that campus. We do, we've seen campuses do some other interesting thing. If you go up to a Colleen ISD school that has um, earned the Purple Star, they have this beautiful giant splash page that, that takes up your whole screen that talks about being a Purple Star school, uh, that this school has earned the Purple Star. And it just, I was like, oh, this is this is a school after God's heart right there. It just really made my heart smile when I saw that. that um, we've seen schools use these. They contract out with someone locally to create banners. They hang up outside the school or inside the school indicating that they're Purple Star campus. We've seen some of them do t-shirts for the campus, you know, celebrating it. And they wear those t-shirts when they do military connected events. Uh, they wear those shirts. Uh, and so you can do with the logo, once you get the logo, you can do whatever you'd like with it. Just don't do it, don't change it or manipulate it in any way. Uh, your school also gets a searchable designation on txschools.gov. And we'll go over what that is in just a second here. All right, so last year when we uh, did our Purple Star campus designations, uh, we did a press, like I said, we sent the, we sent all the information to the superintendents the day before. Um, and then we did a press release. So this is a copy of the press release that we did. Uh, each in the, in the folder for each superintendent is a letter for each campus that has earned the Purple Star designation. And as you can see here, uh, this, is, this is one for Clean High School. And so we sent it to the superintendent. It was superintendent there at the time. Uh, and when, you know, Texas Education is pleased to announce that, you know, Clean High School has fulfilled the criterion for earning the Purple Star Campus designation. And so we did want to uh, do, that was something we had done for the first time, was customizing those letters. Because I, I was a principal for two, 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 for two decades. And I loved having something like this that I could include in my newsletters. We could post them on our webpage so parents could see them. I mean, it's a really big deal to become a Purple Star Campus. Uh, and it's, it's not easy to become one. And that's why there's, so, there's only 227 of them right now. But it, last year, we, it was, we had a big deal about it. Uh, it was it was first time we got room on the TEA's main page. We got a banner on the TEA's main page uh, that linked to the, to the press releases and the list of all the those that have won the award. And so it was a pretty big deal. So last year, we had our largest application pool ever, um, 179 campuses across 10 different uh, education service center regions were included. Uh, we had 29 ISDs that were represented and, char and charters. And the number of campuses that uh, received the Purple Side campus designation was up 298% versus the previous school year. Uh, of those who received the Purple Star campus designation, 51.4% of them were recertifications. And uh, the list of all those are on the Purple Star page. We have the list from the first year, the second year, and the third year. And this will be our fourth year coming up. But the list, if you want to know who has done it or if your school's ever got it, you can look at those lists. They're all listed there by ESC. Uh, we announced on September 22nd last year. So we're a little bit late getting that last year. And again, the lists are available on our website. You can see the, the, the awardees from each of the previous three school years. So the big question I know everybody's asking, we've talked about it a couple of times, uh, this, this for the school year 23-24 application window opened on April 3rd. So it's open right now. And, and see, it closes on June 2nd, 2023. So you have, to, you have plenty of time. I would not wait until the last second because there are, and we'll talk about this in just a second, about the application specifically and what the questions are like, what they look like and all that. And when I mail you guys um, the presentation, I'm gonna include something called the campus application preview. Uh, the one that's linked on our site right now it takes you to some weird page. Um, and so I got to get with our uh, web, web people to uh, fix that, but I will send you the PDF when I send the email out today. So you have it. If I get time, I'll pull it up during this presentation and, and, and kind of walk you through it. Uh, earlier, we mentioned txschools.gov. Uh, this is a new thing for us. This well, is relatively new for us. We've only had it for around for a few years. txschools.gov is your one-stop shop for seeing anything or learning anything or getting any information you want about all Texas public schools and open enrollment charter schools. And it is a searchable database. I'll walk you through a quick example of how it works. 
So let me put, do my zoom here. So a parent who wants to say, for instance, they get there over in Okinawa, Japan, and they get orders to come to, hey, you're going to be moving to Fort Hood um, near, near Waco, Texas. What they can do is they can kind of go and research what schools are near, what school districts are near uh, the Fort Hood area. And that's what we have here. So we have, uh, you know, they've put in, whoops, I guess you can only use one of these tools at a time. So they put in, you know, Copper Cove ISD and Colleen ISD. Those are both near um, the Fort Hood area. Uh, they put in the schools. They chose a the school rating. So A, B, C are not rated. They can choose any or all of those. Uh, they can search for certain academic programs. Like if you want to know if your, if your school offers a uh, certain academic program, certain AP courses, certain UL activities. Does your school have a football team? Does your team have a band? Uh, they, can, they can filter for those kind of things. They can filter for charter or traditional public school. Uh, they can also filter for online virtual schools and alternative schools. Uh, so they can search and enrollment type there. The good thing about this for us is that they can also, there's only two main um, recognitions for schools. One is the Purple Star School designation and the other is a Blue Ribbon School. We all know that one's awarded by the federal government. Uh, the Purple Star School is, is, a, is the state's version of that for military connected families. And so they can click on that. And in this example, the parent chose, you know, Copper's Cove, Colleen, they chose an A rating. They chose uh, a Purple Star School. And this is what they, they so I gave them the results. So these were the campuses in within those two school districts that met their criterion. Um, and so it gives them, and then they just click on the link and they go directly into the school and see all the information that's out there about the school. So this is a really, we're trying to encourage our LEAs to really point parents towards this because this is a great database, has lots of information there. If you want to go in there and look up your school, again, the URL is txschools.gov. Uh, you can search by ISD, get a lot of filters, including the Purple Star filter. All right, so let's go right to how to apply. All right, so if you get ready to do your application, you're going to visit the TEA Purple Star Campus designation website and click the application link. So when you go to it, it looks, here's how it looks when you go to the page. You have to scroll all the way down. Uh, when you go to the, page, the Purple Star page, as you scroll down to the bottom, it says how to apply. There's a link there that says Purple Star application. The link is actually now posted there. Uh, this was the one I was mentioning earlier that we have to fix um, because it's taking you somewhere else right now. When we send it to them to post it, it, it they posted something different. Uh, this is the campus application self-assessment rubric that I was mentioning earlier. So it's right there as well. And then the two the two um, trainings that we had, those are there. I'll go ahead and remove those. And those will be here you, where you will see the uh, presentation and the recording will be listed next to these uh, once we get that through uh, our accessibility uh, approval process. Uh, the application again window is again April 3rd through June 2nd, 2023. Uh, be, one thing to make, make of note is we use uh, the survey application form is done through um, a system we use here at TEA called Qualtrics. And what it does is when you access the application, it puts a cookie on your on that computer. And so if you have the cookie on your, in your computer, it allows you to access the application depending on where you, if you have to come and go, because that's not something you'll do in one day. So you may work on it over a couple of days, over a couple of weeks. Uh, if you access it from a different computer, it is going to have you start over each time. So once you access it from a computer, you have to continue your application through that same computer, or you will find yourself having to um, restart the application each time. So I would highly advise just as a, this is something that, that causes people some frustration, uh, it causes a lot of questions. And so if you know your campus mail, mail is, liaison is gonna be, or if it's gonna be completing your application, it always needs to come be completed on that same computer. Of course, if you have any questions, you can send an email to militaryconnectedstudents at tea.texas.gov that comes directly to my inbox and I get those. I will also advertise um, some office hours during the process. So I'll have a couple of days where I come on and I just kind of 
will be there and be available to answer questions for anyone who's working on their applications. And we will announce that in the Military Connected stu Student in the Military Connected Student newsletter. Uh, and I will show you how to sign up for that a little bit later. But throughout this process, I have a maybe one day a week where I have maybe a, an hour or so a week where uh, I will just it'll be dedicated to answering questions and helping people with their applications. And so uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that for you as well. We want to support our LEAs in applying for these because we want as many people as possible, as many campuses as possible to earn the Purpose Star Campus designation. So going on with how to apply, uh, be sure to document your activities. We've talked about, uh, say, for instance, if you post something like month, this an easy one, an easy one is this is month of the military child. Um, MSEC offers in their toolkit, they have some some pictures that you can use to screenshot and grab and post on your social media. Uh, it's all in the Purple Star Toolkit. Um, and so does um, uh, there's another organization that does it. Military One Source also has some um, uh, some has a toolkit that they use. Um, you want to so screenshots from your social media posts, your website posts, uh, emails. If you do a proclamation resolution, upload a copy of that via PDF, uh, PDFs of your presentations for staff development, sign-in pages, any kind of flyers you use to advertise anything or banners, posters, et cetera. Take pictures of those, uh, create a PDF or upload the PDFs to us. Uh, if you're doing an activity or you're showing a quick, you know, quick clip of someone coming to do, to speak at your school the, about military connected uh, related issues, uh, just, you don't need to upload the whole video, but just upload, you can upload a link to the video. Uh, and you want to host that on YouTube, uh, one of the free ones like your video YouTube or Vimeo or SharePoint or Google Drive. And so when you want to upload a video, you would just uh, put the link to that video on there. And then under the description, you would tell us what that link to that video is, to, is showing us what that is. You just have to explain that. It says provide a description of the evidence you just uploaded. So you provide a description of the evidence that you just uploaded. Uh, again, here's where I talked about mentioning that best practice piece. Uh, we highly, highly, highly advise that every campus does an electronic portfolio so that, again, if you have the military liaison position that moves from one person to another, uh, you also can download a copy of your application, I believe, um, or print out your answers uh, and so that you always have a copy of that. But we advise you to keep those things in an electronic portfolio. And again, if you use Google or you use SharePoint, if you use anything where you can save something electronically, uh, put everything all in one place in one folder. Uh, electronically so that that can be passed on and it makes it also easy to upload the items for your application. Are we doing good on time? We've got about 30 minutes left. All right. Um, let's talk about the this year's application. Uh, based on some feedback that we got from, from some of the people who applied last year and some of our school liaisons, some of our reviewers, we revised the application slightly from the last year's application. Uh, we dropped it down from 32 questions to 26 questions. And so I want to explain the, the three types of questions and walk through those so you understand kind of what those are. And like I said, if I get a second here, I'll pull up the um, application preview and we'll walk you through the actual questions. Uh, so none of the questions are informative questions. Those are easy ones like, what is your what is your uh, campus? What is your your ESC? If you don't know what your ESC is, your Education Service Center, ask someone. You may hear them called Region This, like Region Four, or Region Five, or Region Ten, or Region whatever. Ask ask your principal. Ask someone who, what your ESC is, and they'll tell you it's a it's a searchable database. And so as you start typing in uh, your URL, your your ESC, it will populate for you. Uh, same thing with your campus. It asks you, you know, your campus, your campus or LEA information. Uh, you type, once you once you type in, you know, Region 13, then it asks you for your LEA information. You your LEA will be your district, so Austin ISD, and then it then populates all the schools that are in Austin ISD. And so then you would scroll through that list and select your LEA, and it's going to have your LEA and campus number right next to it. Uh, there are 14 descriptive questions where we ask you to provide a detailed or short description of something that you uploaded. Or how does your campus do this to meet this requirement? And that is in statute. Like, how does your campus uh, work with, uh, how does your campus make sure that students are coded correctly in PEMS? And so you upload a little description of how they work, how you work with either the campus clerk or the registrar or the counselor, or whomever, to make sure that you've done it. So you just upload a little uh, description about that. Um, there are three evidence upload questions. We have to provide the evidence of. So that's where you would upload. These are ones where you upload things like, um, uh, pictures or videos or um, any kind of documents, sign-in sheets, 
picture uh, uh, PDFs of PowerPoints. Again, we ask you to, any documents that you're uploading, please upload those in PDFs because one of the things that really slows down the, the, the review process is people upload these giant uh, 150 to 200 megabyte PowerPoint presentations that then we have to download ourselves to, and to, to look at them. It's so much easier because we can just look at it in the, in the system then if you upload it via PDF. So we are requiring that everyone upload any documents in PDF only. One other one thing we'll make sure you do is please be sure to click the submit button at the very end. Uh, once, once you've done the last question, uh, I think it's question number 26 or 28, 20, I think it's 28. Um, this, it says the number, the question number 26 is the submit button. Uh, and so you would hit the submit button <clears throat> and you will receive a confirmation email letting you know that your application has been submitted. We ask you to please hold on to that uh, that um, email, the confirmation email. And if you don't get a confirmation email, send me an email so I can go into the system and look and see kind of where your application is, where it, where it left off. And, and I'll get back with you and let you know where that is. But we had a couple of schools that did not submit the application. They didn't hit the submit, submit button. And so when the Purple Star Campus list came out, they wanted to know why this school didn't receive it. And one of the things I told them is that we never got an application from you. It's not in the system. It shows that you started one, but it doesn't show that you submit one, you submitted one. Um, complete this at the end. There's a survey there. We'd like you to provide us with the feedback. Again, we took that feedback from you last year, and we revised the application this year based on the feedback we got. And again, just as a final as a note, we just want to make sure you know that that application must be completed on the same computer. Let's talk about some of the frequent application errors, and then we'll jump into the Q and A. Um, and then if we have time, I'll pull up that um, application preview and just kind of show you what that looks like. So some of the frequent application errors are, you know, people select the wrong local education agency, that's your district or your campus, or they select the wrong ESC, that's your ESC Region Educational Service Center, say Region 10, Region 2, Region 3, or whatever the case may be, because that messes up the, the flow, because these are if and questions, the way they built their logic-based questions. Um, the URL for their campus-based web page is not provided. That was one that was probably one of the biggest ones um, that we saw last year was people, they, they did not provide their campus-based website URL. They did the one for the district, but again, your campus-based URL needs to be there because you do have to need to have one off of your campus-based website. Uh, the campus-based campus -based military liaison is not an employee of the LEA. Again, that will disqualify your application very quickly. Uh, descriptions of activities or evidence is overly vague. Um, so say, for instance, they uploaded a picture and they would say, uh, just say something like uh, events celebrating military students. Well, that that's that's super vague and I have no idea what that means. And so you'd want to kind of just give a bit more details on what this is, what date it occurred and things like that, and what's actually happening in, in the picture or the video. Uh, again, they, or they do not provide enough detailed information because you want to paint a clear picture um, uh, the other thing is that sometimes they, when it says upload something that people would not upload, they leave it blank. And that, again, your application <clears throat> is automatically um, rejected at that point. Um, large documents, videos, pictures uploaded as opposed to links to the documentation. Uh, again, we want all documents uploaded in PDF format. Um, one of the things, we, again, we saw is people would provide no evidence uh, for questions where we ask you to upload evidence. Or again, last one, the biggest one, or a crucial one, so they didn't click submit the didn't click the submit button to send their survey over their uh, application over to us. Go over a couple of FAQs in, and then we'll jump into the Q and A and see which cues you have. Uh, so, does a district, does a campus facility liaison have to be an employee of the school district? The answer is yes. Uh, can I work with my school district to help create my easily accessible website? The answer is yes. However, your campus-based site must list the contact information and responsibilities for your campus-based liaison. Or again, if you're a small district and one person is going to serve as a campus-based liaison for your three or four campuses in your district, that's, just, that's perfectly fine. Uh, what is the best way to submit collected evidence? Answer, host, uh, host videos on YouTube, Vimeo, or et cetera. Uh, post other forms of evidence as PDFs. Uh, and yes, these can be hosted or stored in a Google folder. If your district is a Google Drive district, uh, you can just you just highlight, you know, right click that document, uh, get the link to it, and you copy and paste that link into the application to allow us to go directly to that and make sure that it, you, you make sure the document is viewable by anybody who has the link. 
And so that's a setting you have to go into Google and Google and your Google folder and change or that document and change is make sure it, that anyone who has the link can view that particular document. Uh, how soon can I expect to know if our application has been approved to earn the Purple Star Campus designation? Answer is August 2023. We'll do a big push and we'll announce them all at the same time. Uh, we'll get that information out to your superintendents. And again, if you don't receive that information from your superintendent, but you but you want to know if, or that you see your name is on the list, so you didn't get your letter or your your high resolution logo, uh, please just email me because uh, we did have that happen at quite a few uh, districts. The superintendent didn't see the email or their spam killed it, uh, so you can just always just email me and I, I have the letters and logo. I, I had to send that out about forty times last year, last year because there were uh, schools that saw the name on the list but they didn't get anything from the superintendent. Uh, what resources are available to assist with completing my application? Uh, some resources are currently available on our Purple Star Campus designation page. Uh, other resources will continue to add resources. So one thing we're looking at doing is creating a checklist to help you walk through the process, through the application process. Uh, we put that application preview out there so you can look at it before you before you actually start. You know, jump on and start working on your application. You can look at all the questions, kind of start ass assembling your data, putting those in folder in a folder, and start getting all that information there. And so. That is um, everything you need to do there. All right, so let's jump in the Q&A and look at your cues. And I can provide you with some A's. Uh, I am sorry, can you repeat who the letter goes to when you receive a designation? Uh, that goes to the superintendent of the school or charter um, of the district or the charter school. We send those to whoever's listed. And um, what we call Ted, uh, Ask Ted. If you go to TEA's website and you just type, do a search for Ask Ted, you can click on that on Ask Ted, and it, it will allow you to see. It gives you the name of the principal for every school, the superintendent for every school, um, person who's listed there, their phone number, their email address. All that is available in Ask Ted on the off the TEA website, and so that's where we get our superintendent email addresses from. Uh, is that we go out to Ask Ted and we we load we load load those for every campus, uh, for each for each uh, district. Um, so you answer that one live. Oh, still got my pointer on here. Uh, let's see, answer that one live. Uh, if no one was done this year, we would have to implement these items this year and apply next year. Uh, you've got time right now to do these things if you want to apply this year. Otherwise, it's completely up to you. You can apply next year if you want. want. Uh, but you still have time to do all these things this year. Again, the biggest thing is like uh, doing the PD for your staff. You can do that by turning over, turn around this presentation. Uh, go ahead today or tomorrow, send out some social media posts, put something in your, in your upcoming newsletter, uh, you know, supporting military kids. Go ahead and get that resolution done. Um, you know, to go have a conversation with your with your registrar, your PIMS clerk, whoever takes the information to talk about uh, what the process is for um, collecting those PIMS, um, collecting that. It's called a, a military student identifier survey. By law, it has to be admitted to every single student who enrolls and every single student in the school should have a PIMS code uh, under the military student identifier. And here's something you can write down It's code C197 is the table. Uh, in P and the PEAM systems. And so you go and talk to your PEAMS clerk, they'll know what you're talking about. It's uh, table C197. There are six codes and every student should have a code. If they're not military connected, their code is zero. Or uh, if they are military connected, it'll be one of the other five codes, one, two, three, four, five. But that's a good that's a good time to have that conversation. And so you just document that conversation, which I talked about, and you put that in the description process. All right, answered live. Uh, where can I get more information on the inter interstate compact training? Um, I will send that out to you, but if you go to um, mic3.net, that's M-I-C-3, the number three, dot net, uh, they have an events calendar there at the top. And so you would go to that and it, it'll you'll just bring up a calendar and you'll see something that says Compact 101 Training. That's what you want to go to, Compact 101 Training. The next one's on April 27th. So you want to go ahead and get signed up for that and register for that. And what happens is once you do the training, she sends you, her uh, name is Lindsay Diblo, she sends you an email 
and then uh, to complete the survey for it. And once you complete the survey, she sends you a certificate. And that certificate is what you can, you can upload that as professional development uh, for the Campus Based Liaison, because the Campus Based Liaison has to do professional development. And so I always recommend Compact 101 and Purple Star are, are, are two recommend first. So get those two done this year. Can you please repeat how you would upload pictures? Uh, just upload them, if, put them in, in a Google folder or something, and then you just post a link to them um, so that when we click on the link, we can see the pictures. Uh, but you want to put those in a, in a picture, or if you want to upload the picture, you can. We want, don't want to, well, the only things we're trying to avoid are the pictures are okay, but giant PowerPoint presentations are, are not. Those really, our, our reviewers, that was big feedback from them last year, was that it made it impossible to do this process. Uh, because they're having to download these giant files to look at them. But you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm always available. Uh, is PEAMS collected by the school, or is it a site I can go to? Our school survey brought back incorrect data. Uh, PEAMS is collected by your by whoever the clerk is at your school that does that. It, can, it may send some schools. It may be done by the counselors. Uh, as when I was a principal, it was always done by my uh, registrar. Uh, they were the PEAMS clerk, uh, but someone at the local campus has to be the PEAMS person, um, and uh, they'll know, and sometimes it's called PEAMS, but it's transitioning to something called TSDS, and so those terms are used interchangeably, um, and eventually the word PEAMS will go away, and they'll just be called TSDS over the next few years. And if you think your uh, school, if you ran if you ran the report in um, your school system, um, SIS system, your student information system, and it, it came back, and if you don't think it came back correct, that would be a time to sit down with your registrar and start looking through some of those things and uh, trying to figure out what happened. But again, they should run that report and every student should have a military student identifier and they should be zero through six. All right, so we've answered all of our questions there. How are we doing in time? We got about 15 minutes. Uh, let's see. Let's do one more poll before we jump into <clears throat> the, I'll tell you what, let me see if I can bring up the, um, I want to show, I want to go ahead and show you the, um, the uh, campus preview. All right, there we go. All right, so I hope every, everyone can see that. So this is the actual application. This is a PDF of all the questions that are in the application. I'm gonna send this out to you when I send out the PDF and your um, CEU, you get two hours of continuing education uh, credit for today's presentation. So you get three, you'll get a couple of things. You get the presentation, you get this PDF of the application preview and you'll get a certificate uh, that you can hold on to saying that you got two hours of continuing education units. So this is a, the, the actual um, application. Uh, so remember I talked about um, uh, information questions. So things like enter your email address, uh, select your region and district, you know, from the list below. There's some drop down boxes in there. Question four, provide them the campus name or number. Begin typing the campus name or number, then select from the drop down menu. So as you begin typing, you know, Thomas Jefferson, you'll see all, all schools in state that are in your, and once you drill down, it's a drill down, um, it'll provide those those schools and then you just select yours. Uh, question five, did your campus receive the Purple Star Campus designation 2122? If you're unsure, um, has your campus previously applied but did not receive the campus designation? The reason we ask you about this one is because if your campus received it in 2122, um, and you can click on this link to see if your campus was on this list. That means that you have to apply this year for recertification. Uh, if you received it last year, or this year rather, 22-23, um, if you were awarded in September this year, you do not need to reapply this year. You don't need to reapply until next spring. So that's going to be the reason that we asked that question, but we provide a link to all you. Just click on the link to see if your school was on that link, is on this link or this link. Uh, then ask for the contact information for your military liaison. This is the most important information in there, especially this email address. Be sure that's accurate because we do email them throughout the year. 
um, to share information with them. See, then remember we talked about the questions that were descriptive questions, like how does the campus military liaison serve as a point of contact and work collab collaboratively between military connected students and their families in the campus? So you provide us with a short description of how the you know how, how the liaison does that, some of the things they do uh, or have done throughout the year. Uh, has campus liaison maintain familiarity with the enrollment process, records transfer. Uh, again, you just work with your your clerk, your counselors to, to talk about that, and then you know just write a description about all that in there. So there's several questions about the campus based liaison. These all related to their uh, statutory responsibilities, um, and then we move into uh, here's just where you would upload information about the PD topics and date. Uh, campus based liaison must have facilitated PD for the staff. So you would upload, you would uh, just give us topics, the objectives, and a date for that. So again, just kind of an information question. Uh, you can, I don't think this is, I don't think this is an upload question, or it might be. Uh, we have to upload the sign in sheet and a copy of the uh, presentation that was used to do staff development. Oh, here it is. So this is the this is the first upload question. So question fifteen is the first one where you would actually upload something. Um, again, come back to that one. So it's question fifteen, and we get into the next section. So the military family one is the military liaison one is the largest part of the application process, and it gets it gets a lot shorter and easier after that. Um, web page for military families. So I'd ask you to drop your URL and your URL in there for your campus-based web page because again, it has to be easily accessible. This language was specifically written into the statute for a reason. They don't want parents running around searching for this page. They should be able to easily find it on you when they go to your web page. Uh, then it asks you to. These are all the things that in statute that it says need to be listed on your campus-based page, uh, and so this gives you a checklist. This makes it very easy. It's like, okay, what all has to be on the page? Here, here are all things that have to be on the page. And you can just, as you put them on there, check them as, you know, done. Uh, the campus transition program, it asks for who's the sponsor. And again, the sponsor for the, um, the campus-based liaison does not necessarily have to be the student-based, the student-led transition uh, sponsor. It can be a, an actual different person. That's up to your campus and your campus leadership to decide that. So then you just upload, you do some, talk a little bit about some of the things that the campus transition team has done. So you just ask another descriptive question. Here's a question. So question 15 was an upload question. Question 20 is your next upload question. Remember, there's only three evidence questions. So 15 and 20 are your upload questions. So this one talks about, you know, some of the program activities you did. This is where you would submit photos of if you posted something on social media this is where you would upload something screenshots of um, your social media posts screenshots from your web page where you created a you know military based web page uh, screenshots uh, or you know a copy of news of a news a pdf of a newsletter that you put up uh, you'd upload pdfs of flyers or newspaper articles if your school has a newspaper and you do something in there uh, any presentations or staff training uh, all those things can go right here in question number 20. So this is the second of three upload questions, and it asks you down here to provide a description of what you just uploaded. Please be sure that description is clear and provides a clear picture of what it is that you just uploaded. So the next one is your military initiative. This is an easy one. It tells you the three things that you can do. You can do one or all three of these. It's up to you. Resolution, easiest one to do because MSEC has the templates on their um, toolkit webpage. Download that, you know, get your superintendent to sign it, uh, take a picture of it, and then just scan that and upload it. And that copy that, that uh, counts as that you haven't done this one. Um, you know, if you send out pictures for the month of the military child or you do banners, take pictures of those banners, upload them. Uh, if you have someone come in and speak, you'd want to capture a little video or a little picture of that. And then you'd provide a detailed description of what it is that you just uploaded. So those are the three. And like I said, if you don't do these, you don't have to put anything in these. 
And so question 26 is your last upload question. So we want you to provide evidence of your campus participation in the military student initiative. Again, you can submit videos, screenshots, social media posts, uh, pictures, uh, man, pictures of flyers. Again, these things should all be in PDF format whenever possible. Uh, or they can be pictures, can be J, you know JPEGs, PNGs, whatever the case may be. Videos should be hyperlinked on the, the if you upload a giant video, there's just no way to, to look at that. And here we provide a description of what you just uploaded, and that is it. Quick question 28 is you have now finished answering all the final questions for the Purple Star Campus designation. To submit your application, please click the submit survey button in blue down below. So there's a button down there that says submit survey. And you're done. So let me close this out. All right. So are there any questions? Let me see if anybody's put anything in there. Awesome. Cool. Doing well. All right. We've got about six minutes left here. Um, so let's go ahead and take, uh, we'll take these last few slides and then we'll let you do a quick poll. poll. Uh, so these are some key resources and supports for you. Um, they're linked on the on the presentation here. This is our the first is our um, Holly Mobile Net Risk Student webpage. These um, are all the areas that we. This is actually the military page. Uh, so this is the it's a it's linked off the page, uh, but this is the actual the military page. So there's areas of general resources, student and family support, school, school support. Uh, post-secondary education information, information for National Guard Reserve and veterans, and children and family youth programs. Here, if you want to learn more about the Interstate Compact Commission, you click here, and it takes you out to another page that talks a little bit about that. But here is the Purple Star page, and so to see the awardees or to see more about this, and to actually get to the application page, you would click right here. So it's Purple Star, the campus designation, learn more. When you click there, it takes you out to the page, that, and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says how to apply. Uh, this is the MSEC Purple Star page. This is one I was telling you about where they have all these resources that you can use. Uh, they have a toolkit where basically you just take it, edit it, and make it your own. Uh, and Military One Source is another one that uh, is a good one to, to reference and use. All right, jo Joanne says, can some of these uploads be the same flyer pictures, meaning some of the evidence can be used for Yes, absolutely. Sometimes, they, sometimes you will use things, the same things, in two, one or more areas. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, and here is how to submit. I remember earlier I mentioned subscribing to our Military Connected newsletter, and so you would um, just go here to this uh, this link down here. This again, again, it's in the presentation. Go to that link. You'll put in your email address here. It'll take you out to a page that and you can sign. These are all the newsletters that TEA offers. So just go down there and check, put a check mark next to Military Connected Students, and that is from then on you'll start getting on Military Connected Student newsletters and any announcements that I send out as well. All right, and the last thing before I have you do a last poll for me is this is my contact information. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Bowser, Holly Mobile State Coordinator. This is my email address. This is the email address for the, the page that takes this is the page that you saw a few seconds ago for the uh, military um, let, page. This is the email address for that. This is the, the link again to sign up for our newsletter. Um, at the at the at the end of this survey, and here once I click on the button to end this webinar, you're going to have a pop up browser that will pop up. There's only three questions. We ask you to please answer those three questions to give us feedback on today's presentation. At TEA, our goal is to always is continuous improvement, and so we actually do look at the feedback you provide, to, to, and it helps us. Uh, one of the questions is, are there what other information would you like training on? And so we use that information to develop training products and resources for our. Um, for our, our um, LEAs out in the field. All right, so we'll do one last poll. And at the beginning, we we did a poll saying, you know, how much do you know? And so this is where we kind of look to see how we did here. So we we'll look at the first one, and then we'll and then we look at the second one to see how things went. So let's go ahead and do see uh, what the answers look like now. All right. So the same question, how much do you know about the Purple Star Campus designation? This is your exit ticket. So we want all, everyone, 100% of everyone who's in here to answer this question.
We're getting about 15 seconds. We only got about 65% who've answered. If you haven't answered, please go ahead and select one of those. Let us know how you're doing. And there's a second question down there that says, how likely is your campus to apply for the Purple Star Campus designation for the 2023-24 school year? Please go ahead and um, answer that one as well. And that will be the last thing we do here. We'll close out once um, we get everyone to answer, answer these questions. So remember, there's two questions. Please answer both. And this is not the survey that I mentioned earlier that has three questions. That one's going to pop up as soon as they hit the end seminar, end webinar button. All right, you got about 20 seconds left because we're going to give we gave you about a minute for each one. We're doing perfect because we is 11:29 and we are about to close out. All right, so let's go ahead and end that poll. And so we'll share out those results with you real quick. Uh, as you can see, the number is shifted uh, where there were lots of ones and twos in the beginning. Now we, the, the vast majority, um, close to close to 90%, is now in the three and four. And that's what exactly what we want to see. And look at this, 80% of the folks here today said they will definitely apply for the Purple Star Campus designation this year. So thank you all so much. Um, I want again, I want to say thank you so much for taking for the opportunity to be here with me today. Um, I really did enjoy this. Um, I am available for you. You have my email address. You have my, my, my contact information. Please email me if you're stuck on anything. I don't want you to, um, to, you know, go walk away being, you know, thinking that you didn't have the support you needed or to be frustrated by the process. That's why I'm here. I'm available. Send me an email. I usually get back to you the same day. Uh, and so, again, I really appreciate this opportunity to be with you all today. Uh, I'm going to click the end webinar button here, and there'll be a brief survey with three questions. Please go ahead and answer that for me to give me feedback on how the, pres the presentation went and what other topics you'd like to see us do throughout the year um, if, as you hopefully all earn the Purple Star Campus designation. So, again, thank you for being here with me today, and I look forward to, to being with you guys again soon. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. <laughs>